Good morning, Fort Lewis Christian Church. Good morning. 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 <laughs> good morning. It's so good to see you all this morning. Um, we were talking earlier. I know that this is not the, the same as what we're used to, um, but it is a blessing to be able to see each other's faces, um, to be able to worship as best we can, um, uh, and, and to know that, that even as we are not able to gather physically, we are still connected um, through the Holy Spirit and through our mutual love. So it's good to see you all this morning. Um, first, our stewardship finance ministry met this past Monday just to talk about how we're doing financially. Um, overall, we, we have been down a little bit this year, um, but since we have had to go into quarantine, uh, giving has been steady. So um, it's kind of a mixed bag right now. Um, Financially, we're not in as good a shape as we were on January 1st, but we are in better shape than we could be. Um, the Stewardship Finance Ministry did talk about ways to try to trim um, our expenditures, and so we're doing some, some work there. Um, but the reality is, is um, a lot of our ministries are kind mm -hmm. of just, they're funded as they are. Our building, our our budgeted items, most of the things that we pay for have to get paid for um, pretty much no matter what. Um, so it's hard to trim a whole lot. Um, but like I said, the good news is so far giving has remained pretty good. Um, so uh, just encourage you all again to please continue to uh, support the ministries of the church. Um, we're doing what we can to make sure that, that we try to stay within our um, financial means. Um, but um, please do continue to give. Um, also update that we are very, very close. I don't have an exact figure, but I, I think we are under a couple hundred dollars from reaching our capital campaign goal. Um, so that is some wonderful news. Um, we'll have some, some full numbers on that next Sunday. Um, but thank you all so much for all of the hard work that has gone into that. Um, Honestly, 30,000 was a big goal before we weren't physically meeting. And the fact that it looks like we're going to meet it um, in spite of all that has been happening is a huge testament to what this church can do together when we put our minds to it. So thank you all so much for that. Um, speaking of that, Diana Curtis is making masks. Diana, do you have one you can hold up and show everybody? <laughs> While she's grabbing a, a mask for everybody to hold up and show you all, um, she's making these masks. If you want to email her, call her, or text her and let her know you want one and give her a mailing address, she will send that to you. Um, and all she's asking is that you make a donation to our capital campaign to uh, help um, reach our goal there. Um, I'm waiting for, there she is. Let me put her on the spotlight video so you can see the mask. Okay. Two different kinds. This is the one I'm starting to make now because it adjusts on the sides. Um, this one had the pleats, um, but I think this one I think might fit and be able to adjust a little better. So I'm starting making more of these now. Okay, thank you, Diana. So if anybody is in need of um, of a mask, please let Diana know. She's happy to to mail it to you and, or deliver it to you. I think um, and just we'll deliver. They can come pick up. We can drop them off at church. Whatever works. Talk, talk to Diana and she'll figure out a way with you to, to make it work. Um, so um, that's, that's a great opportunity. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to let y'all know about is I have mentioned that we want a lot of different voices involved in our worship services, even though we're doing it from home. Um, I have created an online calendar called Calendly. Um, if you look in the chat function, I've put a link to that in the chat. Um, it's calendly.com slash benflcc. And you can go sign up. You can sign up to do moments with children, to light the candle, to do scripture reading. And then there's a, a fourth section. If there is something special you want to do as part of the worship service, whether it be um, a song or a interpretive dance or whatever, you can sign up in that part and just put in the notes what you want to do. And I'll get an email immediately letting me know. And that way we don't have multiple people trying to sign up for the same uh, Sunday as well. 
Um, so if you can um, and you want to go to that link, Cindy Jones also emailed that out last week. So you should have it in your email. And I, just a quick reminder, y'all, we don't know what we're doing. Um, like we have no clue half the time how to figure this stuff out. This is an all new experience for all of us. So if you feel intimidated and feel like, well, I don't know if it's going to be perfect. It's not. None of this is going to be perfect. This is actually a great time for you to get involved in worship leadership because we don't expect perfection. We don't expect it to be exactly the way it's supposed to be. In fact, we just expect us to come and try and see what we can do. So if you want to read scripture, do a moments with children, light the candle, whatever you want to do, now is the time to do it because there is so much grace in our online worship services because of the way we're trying to figure all this out. So um, just, I, I really do encourage you, sign up, do something as part of our worship services. Um, honestly, I'm getting tired of looking at myself and hearing my own voice. Um, so uh, I really encourage y'all, please, please sign up for that. Um, on the masks, Diana also put a, a message over there for a phone number or email to get in touch with her for the masks in the chat function as well. Um, now let's turn our hearts and minds to God in worship. Um, as I said, we are figuring a lot out as we go, and um, the, the good news is, is we've got some people who are working really, really hard. Um, Danita, the choir, and Mark Britton have made sure that we have music each week, even when I forget to uh, include the sound with it, um, but um, they put together um, a song I think we'll all know, and I'm actually going to take us, well, I'll leave it up to you. If you want to unmute yourself and sing along, um, feel free to do so. Um, our, our opening song this morning is Christ the Lord is Risen Today. my singing becomes too much, y'all let me know and I'll mute myself during the songs too because I know I'm not always on key. Um, it is time for our uh, moments with children. Um, so if, if all the kids want to come in um, and I'm going to invite the kids to un or the parents of the kids to unmute their mics. Um, might work a little bit better instead of unmuting everybody like I had been doing. 
Oh, well, good morning. How are y'all doing? Good. Yeah. Thank good. We all good? Yeah. All right. Hey, do y'all know what, what am I holding here? Can you see? Um, yeah. A candle. A candle. What's a candle for? Uh, for light. For light. That's exactly right. Um, so... Have any of y'all ever lit the candles at church before? If you have raised Yes. Yeah. yeah. Why do we light the candles at church? Why does Anybody know? Nobody knows why we light the candles at church? Did you know that I don't really know either? I know sort of. I've got an idea but I don't know the whole thing. Part of why we light the candles at church is we're bringing in the light of Christ to remind us that Jesus is there. And when we take it back out at the end of church, we remember that Christ's light goes back out with us. But do you know what that means? Do you know what it means to bring in Christ's light and take Christ's light out with us? Does anybody know? We can. No? No. No. Yeah. Guess what? That's okay. Did you know it's okay to say I don't know? Yes. Yes. Good, Emma. <laughs> In fact, it's good to say I don't know. Do you know why it's good to say I don't know? Because sometimes you don't know things. Yeah, because sometimes you don't know things. There are things I don't know. Lots of things I don't know. I bet if you asked all the other adults in here if there are things they don't know, they'd say, yeah. <clears throat> I see a lot of nodding heads around. There are lots of things that we don't know. And that's okay. It's okay to not know everything about what we're doing. You know why? There's actually two good reasons. Thank you, Uncle. Because it helps us to figure out how to finish what it's working on. Is that what you said, Oliver? What did you say? Say it out loud. Yes, Dad doesn't know too. Dads and moms don't know sometimes, right? Don't tell them. But sometimes we don't know either, and that's okay. Because number one, when we don't know something, it means we can learn. Do y'all like learning? Yeah. yeah? Learning is good, yeah. right? Yeah. So when you say, I don't know, it means here's an opportunity to learn. G -G. So it's good for that reason. But you know why else it's good? Not sure. It's also good. Because some things about God we can't know, and we just need to know that God is with us, even when we don't understand, right? Yes. So when y'all light the candle, one thing I want you to think of, when you see a candle, when you see light like this, think about the fact that God is with you, even if you don't understand it, even if you don't know what it means, know that God is with you, okay? All right, will y'all say a prayer with me? Dear God, thank you for being with us. Thank you for loving us and teaching us and showing us wonder. Help us to know you are always with us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. Okay, now I am going to unmute everybody. Uh, uh, so we can hear everybody right now. It's time for our sharing of joys and concerns. Um, I, I do have a, a few updates. Um, 
prayers for um, the Odie family um, and, and the passing of Jason's dad, Mike. Um, prayers for the Franciscos and the Shepherds and the Morans and Wilkes and all of the families um, who are currently in, or have a loved one in um, a nursing care facility. Um, we know this continues to be a difficult time. Prayers especially for um, Richfield where there have been at least one positive um, COVID case. Um, prayers also for the young family. Um, they, they lost a, a premature baby named Eli this, this week. Um, they're friends with Mark Britton's. Um, prayers for Wayne Ayers, who, who has been on the scale, um, and so he's been retaining fluid. Um, for Marshall, um, who is a teacher at Glenver High School, um, she has special needs and has COVID and is hospitalized in serious condition. Um, prayers also for Bill and Jewel Epling. Bill has um, gone to South Carolina to be with his uh, son and will be staying down there indefinitely. He still has his um, room at Richfield, but has, has gone down to stay with his son for the time being. Um, are there other joys or concerns to lift up this morning? Yes, y'all are quiet today. Um, let's also obviously pray for all the uh, victims and all of those who are frontline fighting the uh, COVID 19 as well. Let's go together to God in prayer. Lord, we ask today that you be with us in the midst of a time that we don't know exactly what's going on in our lives. Help us to feel, first and foremost, your presence and your love. Remind us, Lord, of the need to settle into that love and that presence. To simply be with you. For we may not find answers or knowledge. But in that place where we know you are present, we can be reminded of your promises that all will be made well. We can learn to trust in those promises and to live as best we can in the midst of a very confusing and chaotic time. Lord, we lift up those we have named here today, the Odie family, the Francisco family, the Shepherd family, the Morans and Thelma Wilkes, the Eplings, and all of those who are in care facilities and separated from their families. For the young family and the loss of their child, Eli, for Wayne Ayers and his family as he is at Lewis Gale, for Pam Marshall and her family as she fights against this disease. For all of those, Lord, who are fighting this disease, who are sick with it, who are dying from it, all of the families who are grieving, for the doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers who are facing it in our hospitals, for those who are working in our grocery stores, who are first responders or otherwise deemed essential in this time. Help them to know your presence and your love, Lord. For those that we have not named aloud, Lord, but that we lift up to you knowing that you hear the cries of our hearts. We give you thanks. We pray this in the name of Jesus, 
who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. In the scripture reading later on this morning, um, we will join the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, where they walk alongside Jesus, and they don't know it. They don't know it until they gather around the table, until he blesses and breaks the bread. It is that action that opens their eyes to what Jesus is doing, to what Jesus has done in the world, and reminds them that Jesus is with them still. And so when we gather, even virtually around the table, to eat and drink, we are reminded of God's presence with us, that Christ has not left us or abandoned us but he is with us still. For it was on that night that Christ was betrayed, that during supper he took a loaf of bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat of this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He blessed it and he poured it, saying, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sins, take and drink of it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. As we come to this time of Holy Communion, we give thanks. Praise the Lord. We provide and partake of this bread and wine so that we can be born anew of the imperishable living and enduring love of God. Help us walk with you, your God, your Jesus, in all aspects of our lives. Amen. Amen. Let us eat this bread together. And let us drink this cup together. I got to say, I love looking around and seeing what everybody's drinking from. I've got a glass of Sprite this morning. Um, I won't call out what everybody just drank from, but uh, <laughs> that's a pretty special sight to, to realize how we all do just kind of take what we have. And know that whatever it is, Jesus blesses it. Jesus calls it good and says, I am here in the midst of all of it. For as often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. Uh, we have another special piece of music this morning. Thank you to Jeff Vass um, for recording this and Mark Britton um, for putting it together. Um. I'm finding myself at a loss for words and the funny thing is it's okay, the last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say, word of God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see. still and know that you're in this place please let 
let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. I'm finding myself in the midst of you. Scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke. Um, it is chapter 13, verses, or sorry, 24, verses 13 through 35. I may have just made Diana go, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up, walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? He asked. About, about Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word, and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are and how slow to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay, Stay with, with us, us, for it is nearly evening. evening. The, the day, day is, is almost over. over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were, were not, not our, our hearts burning within us while we talked with us on the road, road 
and, and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them, assembled together and saying, It's it true, true, the, the Lord, Lord has risen, risen and has, has appeared to Simon. Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This, this is, is the, the word, word of, of the Lord. Lord. Thanks be to God. So I, I've mentioned before that um, I sat down and, and prepared uh, all the sermons that I'm preaching uh, before we really knew anything about the coronavirus or COVID-19. We had, we had heard some rumors about what was going on around the world, but, but nothing like what we now know in terms of the outbreak that we've seen. Um, I sat down and, and just read through the scriptures and, and prepared my sermons. And uh, when I was preparing this one, while, while I was reading this scripture, a uh, U2 song, which quotes Jesus, um, popped into my mind. It's called, If God Would Send His Angels. And part of the chorus is, it's the blind leading the blind. And I, I thought of uh, Cleopas and, um, and honestly, I don't know how to say his name. I think Diana said Cleopas, um, Cleopas, Cleopas. There, there's no way to know, um, but we'll call, I'm gonna call him Cleopas. Um, and his friend are walking along and, and they think they know what's going on. And it just, it, it just really struck me how blind they were to what was actually happening and if their eyes never were open to Jesus how they would have led so many people in their blindness without realizing what they were saying or what they were doing they knew what the story was to them when Jesus asked what are y'all talking about they told him Jesus is dead it's over we had hoped that he would be the one that would bring salvation to Israel but obviously we were wrong at that point in the story, if nothing more happens, that's the end. Jesus was a prophet who did some really neat stuff, but that's it. And I, I thought of that song, If God Would Send His Angels, because the, the rest of the chorus is, if God would send his angels or if God would send a sign. And I think about the ways in which we are always seeking God's angels or a sign from God as to what is happening in the world to help us know and understand. And it's a beautiful thought. We've all wished at some point in time in our lives that God would send the messenger or place a sign in the heavens or somehow help us to know and understand and have all of the answers as to what we should do and how we should live and all of these other things. But I think what we miss sometimes is where we have to start, which is our own blindness, our own inability to see where it is we're going. In the bridge of the song, If God Will Send His Angels, there is this cry. It's, it's sung, but it's very clearly a cry. Where are we going? It's asking God to help us know where we are going. When we are in the midst of something we don't understand, when we're in the midst of grief and confusion, we can want to rush ahead to answers. Cleopas and his friend are heading down the Emmaus Road toward answers. They've already got them. They know what has happened. They had hoped that maybe somehow Jesus would be the one who brings salvation, but obviously that wasn't right. There's a line in this scripture that astounds me. Jesus comes and says, what are you all talking about? And Cleopas and the other disciples say, are you the only one in Jerusalem who doesn't know what has happened? Thinking that he's a stranger. But being able to read and see this scripture from a more, from a future standpoint, knowing what's going on, I want to take a second and, and just think about and look at this. 
the only one who had gone through the suffering of the cross voluntarily through the pain of the whippings and carrying the cross and being crucified and dying, the only one who had done that voluntarily. And Cleopas and the other disciple look at him and say, are you the only one that doesn't know what has happened here? They're looking at the only one who knows what has happened. He's the only one that knows. How blind are they and how blind are we when God enters our lives and says, what's going on here? How often do we think we already have the answers like Cleopas and the other disciple? I know what's happened. I know how terrible it is. I know that it's the end of the road for all of my hopes and dreams. I know. But in the midst of grief and confusion and pain, we are not called to answers. We are called to sit and look for God. Thankfully, Jesus is patient. Thankfully, Jesus is willing to continue to walk the road with us, even when we think we know the answers. The beauty of the Emmaus Road is not simply that Jesus comes and reveals everything to them. It's that he stays, even when they try to tell him about what happened to him. Even when they try to say they know better than he does. He doesn't walk away. He doesn't abandon them. He doesn't say, well, I guess you've got all the answers, so go on ahead. You don't need me to walk this road. He walks. He explains everything to them, and yet they still don't recognize him. The one that they have called teacher throughout the time that they have known him is teaching them once again. He's going through all of the scriptures. This is not a five-minute journey and explaining to them all that is happening. And even still, even when you would think that's the time they will see him, they will recognize him. He is teacher. They still don't recognize him. They still don't know, know who it is. They like him. They appreciate the teaching. They like him enough to invite him in. But that's actually the moment where things can change. Because oftentimes we don't get to God by rationality. We don't think our way through it. We don't learn our way to it. It is in a moment of wonder that we have to stand back and allow God to pierce our lives, to break into our lives and reveal something to us. In the breaking of the bread, their eyes were opened. And then he was gone. As soon as they recognized him, he disappeared. But now they had found joy. I've got to be honest, they obviously still don't understand what's happening. Their eyes have been opened, but they still don't get it. Because it's not about getting it. It's not about the answers. It's actually about holy wonder. Something that we have all lost at times in our lives. The ability to just be amazed. To wonder at what God is doing to allow our eyes to be opened and see something we don't understand, but we know is beautiful and is good. This holy wonder is a spiritual practice that during this time we should be able to allow to re-enter our lives. Because we are in a time where there is so much that is unknown. We don't have the answers. There's a lot of pain and a lot of confusion and a lot of sorrow. We are trying to figure out as a society how to balance the needs of so many different people. And in the midst of it, so many of those people are hurting. Those who are vulnerable to illness are scared 
that things may open too quickly and that they will be put in harm's way for the desire to reopen the economy. Others have lost their jobs, lost their incomes, lost their ability to pay rent, to have health insurance, to eat, because the economy had to be closed. And they are scared and desperate for answers about when their income can return. Some of us are in the middle. We know people who are dealing with all of these things. And the reality is we don't have the answers. None of us do. It's okay and even necessary to admit that, to allow the chaos and confusion around us to sit with us. Because one promise we find throughout scriptures is that is when God shows up. That is the place where God says, I'm still here. You are not forsaken. You are not abandoned. You are not alone. This is a terribly hard time. We can sit, as the disciples did, wondering what happened to the way we thought things were going. But when we try to force our answers into this situation, we will be just like Cleopas and his friend, ready to go on about our lives because hope was lost. The one who came to bring salvation had been crucified, and the story was at its end. And if we are not able and willing to experience that holy wonder, we will continue to walk the road thinking that we know the answers rather than allowing God to open our eyes. Here's the beautiful thing about holy wonder. Even though it's scary, even though it feels, leaves us feeling vulnerable and uncomfortable in ways that many of us have never experienced, it is holy wonder that opens us up to the imagination of God's kingdom. It is holy wonder that allows us to see the possibilities of the world around us, the possibilities that God's creation can indeed come to salvation, that God's kingdom is possible in this world. But first, we have to enter into the wonder and the discomfort, the vulnerability and the fear of not having the answers. This morning, I, I received my daily prayer email from a, a friar named Richard Rohr. And Richard Rohr, in this email, said that one of the things we can learn right now is that in order to enter into a new way of living, in order to enter into this new kingdom that God has promised us, we are going to have to learn to fail at the things we have succeeded at. Because the things that we have succeeded at have gotten us to where we are. The things that we are good at have built the world as it is. So we're gonna to have to learn to fail at those things in order to succeed in God's kingdom, in order to live in the goodness and fullness and mercy and justice of the new world God is birthing before us. It starts with wonder. It starts with being willing to say, I don't have the answers. I don't know where we are going, but there's one who walks beside me who does. And he leads me and he leads me. He takes me by the hand and leads me. If I am trying to lead when I am blind, it is the blind leading the blind. But if I take the hand of the one who leads me, if we take the hand of the one who leads us, we will be led 
by the one who can see. Amen. I invite y'all this week, once again, to take time for wonder. Uh, talking about wonder is one thing. The practice is a completely different thing. Each day, try to start with a little bit of time where you let go of your answers of how the world is and how the world is supposed to be and simply sit breathing in God's presence, allowing God to bring to mind that wonder, that new world. Start with 30 seconds. It may not seem like much, but it will when you're doing it. And slowly let it grow each day so that you spend more and more time in wonder, in listening, and in seeking the hand that will guide you. Now, if you'll please bow for our benediction. The one who created all things, the one whose love is the life force of every being in all creation is within you and around you, lifting you up with light and love. Amen. I'm going to take you all, all off of mute and you can do say good morning to each other. Um, thank you again for, for coming. Bye, guys. Bye, Heather. Bye, Bye everyone. Hey, Joy. Bye. Hey, have a good week. Bye. You have too. Good week. Good. Bye, we'll have a good week. Together with everybody. It's good to be together. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. 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 <laughs> thank you, Dan. Oh, thank you all. Thank you. Have a good week. Thank you. Y'all have a good week too. Thank you, Dan, for your help. Oh, absolutely. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Shake your hand, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Paul and Kathy. Bye, Alice and Dan and, and everybody else on here. God bless y'all. See you. Have a good you too. Yeah, you too. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs>